appeal to you about the opportunity to come here to Indiana and join Rick's staff? Um, you know, a lot. I, I got to know Rick uh, over the really a long time. I got to know Rick a while back uh, through Gerg's camp. If, if any of you guys are familiar with Gerg's camp in the summertime in Vegas, um, you know, Rick tried to hire me away from Brett in Philly about five or six years ago. Um, and so that was really kind of a, an eye opening moment back then as you're trying to get established and knowing someone's trying to reach out uh, when they have an opening. And, and then obviously we got to know each other extremely well last year with the uh, a lot of the social justice um, issues and concerns that were going on and what we were doing with the coaches association and, and me being appointed the chair um, for the racial justice committee and uh, Rick being the head of the coaches association. So we've developed a, a relationship um, on and off the court over the past, you know, I'd say eight years, seven or eight years. And, um, you know, when the opportunity came about, you know, he was in a similar situation um, in terms of style of play and what they were doing with Luca up in Dallas and what we were doing with Trey. And um, you know, we had some conversations about what this team could present and where they are and uh, how we could help, um, you know, have, have some success here. And um, I think we had the same mindset of, of, of this being a unique opportunity, a special place and uh, a, a really good group to, uh, to work with at this stage. Other questions, please. We'll keep this going. Jeremiah, go ahead. I know it's been an action-packed summer for you being all over the world and now trying to get acclimated to the new job. What conversations, if any, have you had with, with some of the players and what are your takeaways from those interactions? Yeah, um, you know, really a unique summer uh, with the Olympic stuff to be away and be a part for as, as long as I was. Um, when I got back from Tokyo, I thought it made sense to just go right to summer league. Uh, as opposed to going to Atlanta, uh, mainly because I knew a lot of the organization and the team was going to be there. And it was a, a easy way, a one-stop shop to just connect with, with as many people as I could before getting to Indiana. And I thought it was great. It was a great decision. Uh, you know, uh, Karis was there. Miles was there. TJ Warren was there. Um, Tori was there. And then all of the young guys through Summer League and the staff. Uh, so it made sense, um, really allowed me an opportunity to get on the floor with some guys in the morning, the, the uh, veteran guys, and then to watch some of the young guys through summer league. So conversations have just been simple. Um, you know, it's, it's August. Um, you know, I don't want to speak with players too much about X's and O's in August. And I know they don't want to speak too much about X's and O's with me in August. Uh, so really it was just getting to know I had dinner with Karis um, after one of the summer league games. And, you know, we didn't talk about basketball at all. We spoke for about two and a half hours and it was really about travel, about business, about opportunities, things of that nature. Miles, I coached in 19. Uh, so we've had some conversations with just some of his interests and things that he's doing throughout the summer. Um, you know, so it, they're all been good, healthy conversations about more life stuff than, uh, than basketball. Uh, I was able to meet with Malcolm in Atlanta and watch him work out at Georgia tech last week and uh, talk a little bit about his foundation and uh, the things he was doing in Kenya and, you know, things of that nature. So, um, you know, I, I think in this business, you know, your, your, your trust is earned and your trust is earned through the relationship. And uh, a lot of times, um, you know, you want to try and get to know the person as opposed to just coaching the player. Akeem, go ahead. Yes, uh, Coach uh, Jeremiah mentioned about your summer, but was how special was it just to be part of Team USA? Uh, was there any one, one main takeaway that you had from just being around such a great group of players and coaches? Yeah, you know, I don't know if there's a higher, um, greater feeling in, in sport, in any sport than the Olympics. Um, you know, I think we all grew up watching, admiring, um, thinking about the Olympic experience. I, I grew up as a track athlete. Um, it was unfortunate for us that we weren't able to go to the events because of, uh, you know, the, the protocols. But, um, you know, it's not a greater feeling. And I think even with everything that we went through, which is a whole other story, it's a ton of adversity, probably the most for any Olympic uh, basketball team in terms of our roster and the different COVID protocols and things of that nature. Uh, so it made the reward a lot greater. Uh, the staff that I was able to work with for the past two uh, events, the um, 
world championships in 19 and then the Olympic experience this year uh, was tremendous. And, and, you know, obviously you guys see Jay uh, Wright, Steve Kerr and pop, but you know, you you remember Ime and Will Hardy were there and Chip England and we had Spo and Mark few and Jamal Mosley, um, you know, with the select team and, and Jeff Van Gundy is always with us as our lead scout in 19. Mike Brown was with us uh, as a scout. Um, PJ Carlissimo showed up and, and hung out. And so just being around that, that type of basketball crew, that, that basketball mind is such a unique experience. And then obviously the players, uh, the players were tremendous in, in Tokyo and uh, really bought in everything that pop was selling in terms of the experience, uh, the necessity, uh, the, necess the necessary um, things that we were going to need in order to get the job done. And uh, I thought the guys were tremendous in their approach. I thought they were tremendous in their efforts and I thought they were tremendous to coach. So uh, what a great feeling, what a great reward, uh, what a great experience. We go ahead. Yeah, from your experience coaching against Indiana the past few seasons, uh, what are your impressions of, of this roster and this franchise from the outside? And has anything changed now that you're a part of the Pacers family? No, you know, the one thing I always think of um, with this group is, is just uh, it's kind of old school basketball, uh, obviously with, with Domas and Miles having two bigs. Um, and they've done a great job of, of really creating an identity of how they played. Um, you know, when Nate McMillan was here with Nate last year, I, I thought offensively there was such tremendous movement. Everyone's worried about spacing and things of that nature, but they do a great job of moving the basketball. You can play through Domas. Miles has reinvented himself where he can space out on the floor. Uh, and there were so many different scoring options on the team. Um, so hard to guard is, is kind of the simplest way of putting it. And I think defensively, you just know what you're going to get. Um, I, I think it's pretty uh, it's pretty evident in most NBA teams. Everyone knows it's going to end up in some sort of mid pick and roll, some sort of ISO, some sort of side pick and roll. Um, and, you know, everyone can make your adjustments to how you guard that way. But I, I thought one of the things that in watching film and, and knowing this Indiana team, uh, the guys always play with tremendous effort and it becomes more and more clear as I'm watching the games all over again. Um, there's a pride defensively. There's an effort that, that uh, is sustainable um, over the years and has been sustainable over the years uh, with or without the injuries. Uh, you just see whoever's on the court is playing with maximum effort. You guys are playing hard. You guys are moving and cutting extremely well. Um, and that's, you know, in, in an essence, that's what you would expect from a team playing in the state of Indiana. Scott. Lloyd, I, I do want to go back to Team USA and, and the night that you guys won. What was I could that? talk Team USA all day. Yeah. <laughs> well, take me through because you guys, I'm sure, felt that weight on your shoulders. So once you had won, really? what was that experience like either at the hotel? We obviously saw at least one video of pop dancing and such. And then the flight home and, and you guys realizing, Hey, this is the last time that group that had to go through all you did for the last month. will be together. Well, the flight home, there were seven guys that left early. So <laughs> a lot of the guys uh, ended up doing a private charter and getting out of there. And I think they ended up in Vegas, but uh, you know, I, I think um, when you go back and you think about team USA, uh, everyone wanted to do it for pop and um it was a special moment because he did feel the pressure. <laughs> uh, we had a, a kind of an inside joke that uh, Pop and Jay Wright were the stressed out coaches and Steve Kerr and I were the, you know, kind of the arrogant, too relaxed coaches. Uh, Pop would always say, how are you guys calm in these moments? Uh, and Steve and I, you know, we expect to win by 30. What are you talking about? And, you know, Pop is worried about one pick and roll coverage or whatever the case may be. So, you know, he felt it and, and it's his job to feel it as a head coach. And it's our job to kind of balance uh, what he's going through with uh, with the preparation and, and getting the guys ready. But no, it's it was uh, the post game feeling was 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 unbelievable. Um, the locker room was great. You guys saw a snippet of pop speech to the team. I'm sure uh, there was a lot more of that. <laughs> Once we got back to the hotel, but it was a unique situation because we played Saturday morning and we had to, you know, do our celebration Saturday afternoon. And then Saturday evening was the medal ceremony after the, the, the bronze game. 
And then the guys, the seven guys took off that night, but then we had to stay uh, Sunday morning. We, we went and supported the women's team and then their medal celebration was right after that. So we really celebrated uh, more so after the women uh, won the gold because we all went straight to the airport <clears throat> and got on the plane, but it was a big party in the airport, um, you know, provided by the women's national team. And it was a big party on the airplane. I don't think uh, many people slept that entire flight back, to be honest with you. Uh, there was a lot of champagne. Um, I got a lot of good pictures with uh, some new friends, Sue Bird and, and Diana. Um, you know, they were, they were great. They were tremendous. Uh, but it was great that everyone got to share and celebrate with each other um, the gold medal. <clears throat> Well, through your experience, did you benefit more being around so, some of those players maybe that you didn't have a relationship with or, or like you had talked with before about all those great basketball minds that you had the opportunity to be in a, a room with and share ideas? You know, it's, it's unique. I think you get the best of everyone in the Olympic experience. Um, um, they don't have to do it for their teams, so they're willing to play a role uh, and, and for a lot of them, this is new. You know, we played Dame Lillard, Dame Lillard off the basketball majority of the game. Um, you know, Jason Tatum came off the bench. Zach Levine was picking up full court. Um, you know, Draymond came off the bench. And so you're getting guys to accept the role that's different than what they've ever had to do. And you're having these conversations with them about it and about the experience and why they signed up for the Olympics um, in a really, you know, tough summer, you know, Devin Booker, Chris Middleton, Drew Holiday, the ultimate respect for them <clears throat> to honor their commitment and to show up when they did. Uh, but you have those conversations and you get to know their humility and you get to see that side of why they're doing it. And some of the basketball conversations are, are definitely more pure uh, because we're speaking more about, you know, in the hotels, about the purity of the game, how they see it, what they like, you know, some of the issues that they, they've had on their teams, but uh, they don't have to worry about their teams as much. They're just talking about basketball. And I thought, you know, some of those individual conversations made the experience great. You mentioned you used to be a track athlete. At what point did you give that up? And what was your event that you yeah, started? I, would, I, I stopped uh, my sophomore year of high school. I was, uh, you know, I was kind of a top five guy in my area, Central Coast section. Um, and I did the long, high, and triple jumps in four by one. And, you know, if you know track, uh, it's taxing. Um, you do the jumping, but you're, you're basically running at practice all day. And it's about the endurance. It's about the buildup. It's about the power. Um, you know, and that's a kind of a critical time in, in your life when your body's still growing and basketball and recruiting are starting. And I just – you know, I just felt it was too much. Every Saturday you have an invitation over, but every Saturday you're trying to play spring league basketball and, um, you know, you have no legs trying to go to a spring league game. And that's, you know, the sport I'm going to be recruited in. Uh, so I, I made a decision. I, I, I do regret it. I wish I would have stayed with track, um, but, but uh, it definitely was my first love. Jeremiah? You mentioned that coaches on, in the Olympic uh, experience, there were the stressed out ones and then maybe the more relaxed ones. Maybe some of that comes along with being the head coach uh, and, and assistant. And as you look ahead, you know, you've been the head coach recently in Atlanta and now you're going to have this you know, experience going back to being an assistant. Do you look forward to having this season of maybe being a little more relaxed after, after you know, some stressful times maybe uh, as a head coach? I've never stressed a day in my life. Okay. <laughs> I mean, it's, you guys that get to know me or see me from afar, I should say, uh, you know, you can look back on videos and, and people make what they make out of them. I, I don't stress. And, and people that know me know that I, I don't stress. This is just basketball. Uh, I'm blessed. It's a wonderful opportunity. Uh, the same year that I was fired as a head coach, I had a daughter won the Olympics, uh, and have a new job. I'm good. Um, so I enjoy being back. Let's just, let's just put it that way. I, I enjoy being back when you're out for four or five months. It sucks. Uh, the the lack of routine sucks sitting at home, uh, trying to figure out, all right, what am I going to do today? Well, I got, I got a, I got a one month old and I got a two year old and, uh, we're going to the park. 
Uh, it's great, but as parents, any of you guys know, <laughs> you kind of want that other stuff too. Um, so, but it's been, it was a silver line and it was great to be home with the, with the newborn. It was great to see the development of the two-year-old who is now three, but I don't stress. This is, this is basketball. 15 years ago, I knew three people in the NBA, Steve Nash, Rex Chapman, and Dave Fisdale. And so 12 years later, I was a head coach, 15 years later, um, I'm entering my 16. Uh, I have been fired as a head coach and I'm still rolling. I'm good. I don't stress. That's a blessing. That's an admirable perspective, but was there one incident or was that wisdom instilled by you, uh, to you very young? Where do you get that from? Um, I believe in tomorrow. I always believe in tomorrow. And so, you know, it's part of the journey, which coach hasn't been fired, which coach hasn't changed teams. Uh, you know, some in a lot of ways, I feel like I'm just now starting my career. Uh, I, you can no longer say, you know, I don't have head coaching experience. Uh, I've been on a bunch of teams, uh, but I feel like I feel like once I got let go and you go through the self-awareness, self-reflection, man, there's so much stuff I didn't know. There's so many things that, you know, and you're always going to do things differently or better or whatever the case may be. I'm not worried about that. Uh, there's so many things you just don't know managing um, delegating things of that nature, how you do it. And, and I thought I did a good job, but there's some stuff that, you know, you, you think you look back and you let go of even more, uh, as a head coach. So, um, I believe in tomorrow, I believe in the stuff you do now prepares you for tomorrow. Um, you know, who knows how long I'll coach, uh, but I'll be fine in leadership regardless of what I do. I, I have no worries about that. So after things went down in Atlanta, it sounds like you, you didn't try to get away from basketball. You tried to reflect and, and, and while enjoying personal time, it sounds like you also uh, understood areas maybe where you grew or had, had to change. Yeah, I think it's healthy. I think, I mean, I think in any sport, you know, I think a lot of coaches will tell you this. A lot of players will say it, you know, you look back and, you know, players specifically will say, you know, I'm, in stage, you know, year five of my career, and I'm going to go through off season and here's some things I need to add to my game and work on. And they hire their individual guys, go to LA and New York, and they start working on it. Same thing for coaches. A lot of coaches go back and look through their notes or watch the film and tidy up. And, uh, you know, what could we have done better? Uh, what did we like? What didn't we like? What can we add next year? We got a new crew of players that may be coming in, or you're on a new team and you try and get better. Um, you know, having self-awareness is, is, is critical in anything that you do. And, and uh, you know, being your big, biggest critic um, doesn't always, it's not a net negative thing. It's just, uh, you know, you're, you're trying to get better. My, I have a big saying, and I, I'm getting better, helping others get better. Um, and so the more I can help others get better, the better I'll be. Uh, and, and regardless of the position or the status or whatever the case may be. Where did your love for defense come? Because I couldn't shoot. <laughs> and I had a great point guard and a great shooting guard that I played with. Uh, I don't know if you guys know Marlon Garnett. He just he was on my staff in Atlanta. He just got hired as a front bench assistant with Charlotte. Uh, he was one of the, we call him money He's because he's money. He had one of the prettiest jump shots, and he was a two guard at Santa Clara with me. And then, obviously, Steve Nash was starting point guard my first two years. Um, so I didn't need to shoot, for one. And uh, I couldn't shoot. So uh, run the lane, catch lobs, get back doors and defend the best player. And uh, and I love it. Does anybody else have self-awareness? See, that's self-awareness. You got to know thyself. Anybody else? What does it mean to you to be back with TJ McConnell? He was excited. He, you guys obviously spent a couple of years together there. And yeah, you know, I, I wonder I, I asked him. Um, you know, who does he have dirt on in the organization to get that contract? I have no idea how he could get that kind of money. Um, and, you know, he and I and Brett Brown were on a text the other day and, you know, just happened to be watching the game against uh, Milwaukee last year. Indiana played and he's guarding Drew Holiday in the post and they just throw a lob right over the top and TJ does nothing. And I'm just I just sent him and I said, what are you doing? It's it's you know, it's that's our relationship. And, you know we've always been like that. And if you ask TJ a story, I guarantee you, he'll tell you the exact same story. So if you guys ever interview him, say, what's the story between you and coach Pierce uh, about excuses? And he'll tell you the story. So I'll let you guys ask him that if you want to at time, we, we, we uh, 
you know, he's the greatest human being. Um, you know, if he made 1 million, 2 million, 3 million, 10 million, whatever it is, he'd, he'd be grateful. He'd be happy. He'd be humble. And he, uh, continue to work harder than anyone in the gym. Um, he, he is, uh, he's what the NBA should be. Last thing for me, do you kind of get settled in? Hey, now? Scott, you're going to ask all the questions or what? Anybody else is welcome to go. <laughs> <laughs> Last thing for me, do you try to settle in now or do you need to get away because you just spent two months doing basketball? Do you need a couple, two, three weeks here? I got fired. I had four months of doing nothing, no routine. I'm looking, I'm dying. I need routine. That's, that's who we are. That's how we're built. Um, so I know I came out here on Monday. Uh, we closed on our house. We're in North Carmel, Northwest Carmel. Uh, we closed on our house yesterday. I got my, my two daughters and my wife here. Uh, we're going to go back to the house at four today and, you know, more routine, figure out what we can add, renovations, all that stuff, you know, good adult stuff that you have to do when you have a family um, and then fly back to Atlanta Thursday and, and try and start that process. But no, I, I look forward to the routine and getting settled. You know, again, we're, we're, we're creatures of habit. Everyone that's in sport, uh, I don't care what sport you're in and, and you're used to the routine. I, I tell people all the time, and it's like, wow, NBA, you guys travel and do all of that. I said, it's actually easy. I know exactly where I'm going to be for the next six months, seven months. It's the beauty of it. And you know, exactly when you're waking up, you know, exactly when you're taking a nap, you know, exactly when you got free time. Um, and that's what we enjoy. That's, that's what we've been built to, 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 to navigate through the year. All right. Thanks, everybody. We appreciate the time. Appreciate you guys.